Okay. Hi there. I'm Ang. And this is basically how I studied for the registered kinesiologist exam for the College of Kinesiologists in Ontario. And this is how I did it with minimal prep. So let's just get on with some background information. So I graduated with my degree in kinesiology and health science from York University in 2018. But with that said, I ended up going to medical school and I'm currently in my third year of medical school. So while preparing for this exam, I always had medical school in the background, or rather medical school was in the foreground while I prepared for this in the background. And it goes to show you that you can prepare for this exam while you have other things going on. And I imagine a lot of you guys may have jobs or you might be in other training at the time, but I definitely think that this exam is doable should you have other things going on in your life. So with that said, um, some background is that you need to know your strengths and weaknesses and particularly work on your weaknesses because that's where you're going to get the questions wrong. So for me, my strengths would be that I would be good at pathologies, physiology, and maybe a bit of anatomy, but I am very weak when it comes to exercise testing, prescription, and ergonomics, because these are courses that I didn't really spend much time in. And also it's not something that's covered very much in my medical training. So these are kind of the areas for me that I needed to work on in particular. Now, obviously these are, when I'm going through this, these are the things that worked for me and this is how I prepared, but you need to recognize, and I recognize this, that everybody is different. And so everybody needs to work on different things. And what worked for me obviously won't necessarily work for everyone, but I figured this would be a good guide for people who just need a place to start and are looking for things. And here is just kind of the email I got saying that I passed my exam when I wrote it in September. It's taken me a while to actually make this video because I've been busy obviously with uh, medical school and also <laughs> just kind of lazy in producing it. So in general, what are the resources that I used for studying for the exam? I'll try and link down the things that I used, but here's kind of the list. So the first thing is obviously the practice test. There's the official one on the website. You can just Google this stuff if I haven't linked it down in the description. It's kind of the foundation of everything. Then this group is actually quite useful on Facebook. You can join the registered kinesiologist exam group. It's, I believe, created by the people who created Confirmation. It's helpful because it's connecting you with other people who are going through the same struggles as you. And it connects us kind of as a community as to what's going on. And, you know, this exam is not something that it's as widely used across the planet, like the MCAT or the NCLEX. Well, I know that the NCLEX is more so used in the US, but the point is there's just not that many people who take this exam and there tends to be less resources out there. So it's kind of nice to have a group community that we can connect on. In addition to this, there's the information free practice. They have a couple of free questions and they also have a practice exam, which in my opinion is a bit expensive, but it is a good chunk of questions to do. And I think that it was helpful in doing, but your mileage may vary. When I go over the way that I studied, you might find it useful, you might not, and you might have other places where you can get practice questions as well. In addition to that, there is the ACSM exercise prescription book. So that's kind of the uh, College of Sport Medicine exercise prescription book that is referenced quite a bit. And it's kind of important to know a few things from it. In addition to all of this, I also did some exam prep hero sample questions and practice exams. The sample questions, there were some free ones and then they have practice exams, but they do give you quite a few more questions for the money that you spend. So I think that this is actually pretty good for the money that you do spend on it because it's quite a bit of questions for not that expensive. So yeah, why am I making this video? Well, basically I'm making it because yeah, like I said, it's not like taking the USMLE or the MCAT or the NCLEX where this exam is pretty niche given that it's only for kinesiologists in Ontario in Canada. So there's just not that many resources and finding specific guides, there's not that many on it. So I figured there was kind of a gap in the knowledge that I'd like to address by making this video. And in addition to that, when you look for how to study for the exam, the official website will basically just say, take the practice exam. And then there's a reference list at the end of the practice exam. 
and then some resources that will just give you tons of books to read through. And <laughs> for the sake of passing the exam, right, you guys already have degrees in kinesiology, right? So the idea of, of having to read through book cover to book cover, 20 plus books, it's kind of just inefficient. So I think that it's important to know how to study for things efficiently and also recognizing that a pass is a pass. So whether you got 100% or you got 70%, the end result is the same here. And so it's not necessarily the most important thing to know every detail from end to end of every book resource that they recommend to you. It's about being efficient here with your study time because we're all very busy and you wanna do more with less time, right? And if you need to learn more along the way, hopefully you can do that on your own time. But this is more specifically on how to get through the exam and be able to become a registered kinesiologist. So what are the steps in terms of how we actually study for the exam or how I studied for it specifically? Well, the first thing is when you are registering to become a kinesiologist, they'll make you do a jurisprudence course. And basically what that means is that you have to go through a course. And I don't know if there is an easy way to access notes on it later afterwards taking it, but I'm glad that I took notes on the course while I was taking it because it gave me something easy to reference later where if I needed to look up something and I'll explain my timeline later, but I ended up taking the exam several years afterwards taking um, this jurisprudence course. So I obviously needed a refresher on the information in it. And it was great to just be able to go back to my notes on it and quickly review it because the stuff is not complicated. It's just things that you have to remember and having a written document of things is kind of nice to have. So afterwards you take your jurisprudence notes. The next step is basically to get a baseline. And so what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to go to the College of Kinesiologists website and then they have the official practice exam and basically just try and do a run through it. Maybe do it under time restrictions and just pretend like you're taking the exam for real, even though that the question numbers aren't correct. Uh, like as in the question, the number of questions on the practice is not the same as the number of questions on the actual exam. Try and scale it such that it's as realistic as possible for you. And so just do a run through and see how you do and then mark it, see whether or not you're passing and how far you are away from it and just gives you a baseline. Don't worry too much about like, oh, I didn't pass, I didn't, or I did pass. It's just kind of getting an idea of where your gaps are. And that's kind of the next step where you find out whether you got a question right or wrong and you find out which questions you got wrong and things that you don't know. And it's important to just mark down these things because afterwards you do that. Now you know, okay, these are the things that I need to study. So the next step is to fill in these gaps. And fortunately uh, for the practice exam, at least there is kind of a work cited section for each of the questions where it will tell you, this is the right answer. And this is the right answer from where we got it from. So I will reference a textbook that you need to read or something like that in which case you can go to the textbook that they ask you to and see what you got wrong and where you need to study a bit. So afterwards you've found out where your gaps are and then you've gone to the source where you find out what the right answer is and the kind of material that you don't know, then you've learned the material at least temporarily. But the next step is to actually make flashcards and use space repetition to make these facts stick. Uh, that's a whole nother topic for another day, but the short answer is basically for me, I use Anki. You can read up more on it if you don't know what it is, but it's just this idea of creating flashcards. And if you get them right, you review them less often because it means that you recognize the answer and you don't need to review it so often. So this is just kind of um, an example of something that I did where I would walk through the exam, say I got this question wrong, right? I don't know when does injury or failure of a tissue occur and I didn't know this. So then I uh, obviously read up a bit, but also I turned this question into a flashcard for me. And then here's the answer. And then here's the reference source where I got this kind of flashcard from and where it inspired me. Here's another example where I didn't have a good idea of what METs were, uh, metabolic equivalents. And so I ended up creating a flashcard that kind of gave me an idea that jogging is about an eight or higher in terms of METs. 
And so I would review these things. And if I got them right and I could remember them at the time, it would show up less often using flashcards. And so this is basically the way that you address your weaknesses and focus on those. And this way you're not spending a whole bunch of time trying to review material that you already know. So afterwards, you've gone through the material and filled in your gaps from the practice exam. You can do a bit more review. And I think that just filling in your gaps and if you know everything on the practice exam pretty well, you're almost there. Um, I know that I felt a lot more comfortable afterwards taking it and filling in my gaps there. But if you have a bit more time, there's extra things you can do. And this is what I did. So I definitely reviewed the ACSM exercise prescription textbook. And I think that's kind of good to go through because there's a lot of fundamentals there. And this was my personal weakness where in general, it was a big gap of mine where I just didn't know what the general exercise prescriptions were very well. And I think that the textbook kind of lays it out quite well. So I think that it's good to go through it. But with that said, you'll get the message on Facebook where they say that it's very important, but I think it's important to review the textbook very efficiently. So for me, I would just try and pressure power through reading through it as quickly as possible instead of getting bogged down on trying to memorize every single detail. So for me, I just try to read as quickly as possible and then kind of create a brief summary of the chapters or rather just take down some of the highlights I found from each one because it's not about, again, learning every single detail from the textbook. It's about learning the most important things because we need to pass here, not get 100% on everything, right? And so here's an example of what I did for chapter six where I kind of just copied and pasted down some of the key points I found. And then a point here is basically some of the boxes and these kind of highlighted figures. They are generally pretty good in the textbook and they highlight some of the most high yield information from it. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're not trying to get bogged. We're just trying to be efficient in getting the uh, key information from the textbook down. And so this was a pretty active way of going through the textbook and it helped me be efficient getting through things, just kind of powering through it. Don't spend too, too much time getting through it. I think I spent a few hours to get through the whole book, not being all that detailed. Okay, so at this point you've done your official practice exam and you've gone through the exercise prescription book. In addition to this, there is a ergonomics note document that is floating around. For me, ergonomics was a personal weakness. I found that the ergonomic document floating around was pretty good at filling in most of the gaps and it covers most of the key information. It's on the Facebook page. If I recall, I think that's where I found it from. But yeah, there is an ergonomics textbook, but somebody has already made notes. And this is a general rule. If somebody has already made notes on things, then while you won't get the efficient practice of making those notes, it can be very efficient to read off those and, you know, make practice questions and review off it and make sure that you know those things because efficiency is key here. So with that said, afterwards, you've done your practice exam and you've gone through the ACSM prescription notes. There's still more you can do here, depending on how much you feel you need and how much extra time you have. For me, I also did some review of ergonomics just on the side and somebody fortunately made a document that kind of summarizes the ergonomics that we need to know for the exam. I found it pretty good and sufficient for things. So I'm grateful to whoever made that document. And this kind of just highlights the importance of being connected with each other in things like our Facebook group. With that said, um, afterwards you've completed these resources and these things, there's other practice exams and review you can do. And there are a whole bunch of sites. I mentioned it on the previous slides of where you can go for them. And there is some free practice questions, but also there are paid ones. And for me, I guess just for comfort of mind and also efficiency, instead of reading through 20 textbooks, I prefer to just be efficient and fill in my gaps by learning from questions and learning where I'm missing information. So for the sake of efficiency, I was okay paying for some practice questions instead of having to just kind of old school learn from a textbook and just hope that I know how to apply the information when it comes to an exam. So the process is the same, of course, you do the exam, you find out where your gaps are, whether you got the answer right or wrong, right? Sometimes you guess and you get the answer right, but that doesn't mean you know it. You still might need to fill in your gaps. So yeah, fill in your gaps, learn where the gaps are, and then use spaced repetition to make sure that you remember the answer. For me, I kind of got lazy towards the end of my preparation, and I was a little bit more confident that I had sufficient knowledge from previous tests and uh, reviewing things that 
instead of just creating flashcards and using space repetition, I did the old school note taking method. I would take a picture of the question I got wrong, and then I would make a note of what the answer is and any relevant notes there. Same thing over here, where basically there's a question I got wrong, and then I made some notes on it. And this process is active and it helped me learn. But obviously, it's not as great as, you know, making notes and then turning them into flashcards and then reviewing them in a spaced repetition way to make sure that they stick. But it was what was sufficient for me at the time. And ultimately I ended up passing, right? So that's kind of the process. I just wanted to put some caveats here where you need to be careful with the resources, especially if they're like third party and like with these kind of practice questions. Ultimately they were created by somebody else. And so there might be errors. So it's important to fact check things and your mileage may vary on how accurate things are. If you're not sure about things, again, this is where being connected to others is helpful because you can message them and be like, hey, what do you think of this answer? Do you think this answer is correct? And sometimes there are errors, but for the most part, my experience has been positive. And at the same time, it's been a more efficient process, again, to just learn through practice questions as opposed to reading through textbooks. Additionally, when you're using third-party resources, you have to be careful about the quality of the questions because they might not be realistic of what will actually show up on the exam. So here's kind of one that is on, on a third party resource. And it just kind of talks about like what is part of this core competency in the domain one knowledge. And this type of thing, it's pretty unlikely to come up on the exam. You kind of have to think about how the exam is written. And that's where you take the practice test and then you see, okay, these are the types of questions I get asked. And so the test, like I said, it would more so tell you and ask you how structure governs function as opposed to asking you what you think you should know. So like, it's more gonna test you about the actual competency than test you on what competencies you should know in this case. So this is not a very good question. And so if that's the case, don't spend any time, you know, reviewing things that are not going to show up on the test that way, right? Be efficient. That's the name of the game here. So yeah, I know that we're all trying to be kinesiologists here, hopefully when you're watching this video. So <laughs> I think of studying kind of like getting your reps in and training in the gym, right? And so it's all about getting the reps where you do the practice questions, you fill in your gaps and you kind of just got to work at it day by day and progressive overload and soon enough you'll have built enough uh, knowledge and information to get through the test. Um, here's something where I didn't actually do very much of, but it was nice where there's kind of a essentials competencies of practice document that's on the official college website. And so it just goes through a whole bunch of competencies that we're expected to have. And so they're kind of hard to use as a studying resource because they can be kind of vague and ambiguous. But at the same time, you know, if you've gone through the practice questions and you feel like they're not benefiting you anymore, this is one more resource where you can kind of try and answer these things where it's like identifies a Trellenberg sign as an abnormal gait pattern, right? So then, you can write up notes on what a Trellenberg sign is and recognizing why it's abnormal and what can it mean. But you kind of have to put in a little extra legwork in figuring out how you can study from this as opposed to just answering questions that have already been made for you, right? Um, this is kind of similar to what we do in medical school, at least my medical school for the first and second year where it'll be like, we're expected to know the nice guidelines on colorectal cancer screening and urgent referral, right? And then you would go and you would do your reading and make notes on like, oh, so here's kind of the details on how we screen and the sensitivity and specificity of colorectal screening. And this kind of process is active. Again, I didn't end up actually doing this very much because I felt pretty comfortable afterwards doing all the practice questions I did, given that like, I think I did, you know, several hundred from all the resources that I compiled. This is just kind of anything extra. And then towards the end, once you've gone through your questions, you can review all the things that you got wrong, right? And then here's kind of other resources I didn't use, but they exist that I'm aware of. Kincarp has some practice questions for the exam, and I think that they're pretty affordable uh, relative to say like information or something like that. And there was also a first line education course. I didn't do too much reading into it because I was pretty satisfied with what I did. But you know, like I said, there's not all that much information out there on this exam and not that many guides. So I figure I could save you some time and looking through stuff. And if these are of interest to you, 
here they are. Here's kind of just the summary slide and conclusion to everything and also my timeline on things. So so technically I was studying for this thing for like two years, but that's definitely not the case where I would do most of my studying the month before or just a little bit more than a month before the actual exam. And my story is that basically I graduated right in 2018, did an extra year at York University, and then I was planning on taking the 2019 exam. But then I got accepted to medical school, so then I had to defer it. Afterwards, that we had the pandemic, so kind of canceled the exam two times in a row. And then afterwards, that I was just kind of out of the country and I wasn't able to fly back for the April 2021 exam. So basically, I wasn't able to write the exam and I had to defer it again till September. And so the most recent exam in September 2021 at the time of this recording is the one that I ended up sitting for the first time and actually passing first try. But yeah, so realistically, it was more like two months part time, a few hours a week studying for this thing. So it's not too, too bad in terms of the preparation as long as you're efficient about things. And that's kind of my goal with this video. Like I said, it's not about being a percent on everything. It's about knowing enough things to pass the exam. And then if you do need to learn more, being able to go to these documents and these resources to read up on what you need, right? Here's kind of the bread and the butter of how we study. You take a baseline exam, you find where your gaps in knowledge are, you fill them in by doing your reading, you make notes, and then you try and use space repetition, reviewing your material so you don't forget and unfill your gaps again, and then repeat and repeat. I think that will be the efficient way of doing things instead of just reading all of the resources that they tell you to. And lastly, you can do it. It's not too bad in the sense that we have degrees, we have background knowledge. Use that to your advantage. Be efficient. You can do it. <laughs> yeah. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below on it. And also, again, we have a pretty good community that is responsive to each other on the page. I wish you good luck. So that's the end of things. I hope that you guys learned something and this has been helpful to you. If not, <laughs> oh well. But yeah, I wish you all the best. And until next time, take care. Bye.